What I've done is this is called the, uh, the curious incident of the broken whiteboard and a new sense of liberation. My whiteboard broke two weeks ago. And this is where the controversy comes in. That I ended up a few years ago winning a technology award and not understanding why. Because at times it's the bane of my life. And at times I, I stay as far away from technology as I can. But then there's moments when it works and it works well that you come back to it and hug it and kiss it and keep it close to you. But recently my, my whiteboard's broken. And I thought, right, what do I do? Uh, I was going to set up a lesson, I had uh, an observation, I had some monitoring, I had some guest uh, teachers coming in. So I had to start thinking about using other things. Um, there was very much a sense in our school of that whiteboard cost a lot of money. Um, you've got to keep using it. So first of all there was panic, then there was liberation. I like to tell stories, um, so that's how I'm going to work today. I'm going to start off with a few stories and see how you sort of take those stories and what you, what you want to take away with you. This is my, one of my daughters, Amelia. She's year two at the minute. Um, was year one, the year group I was teaching. At school, she's learning about staying healthy. She's come home and told me the other day, Dad, you're really fat. Um, Dad, you've got to look at what you're eating, otherwise you're going to have a stroke or a heart attack. So this is how I'm going to sort of work the last half hour. Little stories told by pictures and my rambles. This is my other daughter, Cara. She's going to get married to Callum. But there's a problem. Callum's best friend, Charlie, Amelia wants her, uh, sorry, Cara wants Charlie to be the bridesmaid. He's not too happy about being a bridesmaid. Where's this picture come from? It's the curious incident of the dog at midnight, the Mark Walden book. Um, love it. Absolutely love the book. Um, and the idea in the very first pages of the book. Um, if you see some red cars, the young boy can't help counting red cars. If he sees five, it's going to be a bad day. If he sees yellow cars and he sees three, it's going to be a good day. You might not agree with anything that I talk about today. You might strongly disagree with stuff that I talk about today. You might think, in ten minutes it's going to be dinner time, so I don't really care. But when you're in that dinner hall, as it says in the book, you might just remember something. There might be something that sticks in your mind that you take away. This is how I like to work at Geary's, and this is where the kind of, why am I here talking about technology? I like rummaging in skips. I go out and I love nothing more than finding a skip with a load of laminate floorboards in. Or maybe some old bits of a tent that someone threw away. And then I like going out in the garden and building a bridge that we can all actually walk across. First time we walked across we collapsed and I had 15 kids in first aid with splinters and a long list of parents. And they said, what are you going to do next? And, and my headmaster came in and said, have you done a risk assessment? I said, yes, I'm going to work out how we can do it again. This time with maybe just 14 scraped knees. We won't stop, we'll go back. I love building things, massive microphones that you can shout at in the garden. Hotels for snails. We did a bird project in our garden, and then two of the kids, this is Sarah, Jasper, and Amani, turned around and said, well, if we're attracting more birds to the garden, we've got a problem, because birds eat snails, and we like the snails. I said, we have got a problem, what should we do? We should build a hotel for the snails. I said, well, what would a hotel look like? Well, it would have lots of flowers, and it would have boxes, and it would have places to go. For me, in my teaching, the kid's voice is absolute paramount. I know these are kind of funny antidotes, but really it's a, a kind of way of saying, for me, what should always come first is the child's voice. Whenever I set out to set up a piece of learning in my classroom with my children, I don't see it as me teaching the children. I see it as us sharing an idea. And for me, that's where technology started changing my teaching. Because very quickly, like we've seen with the visualizers, like we've seen with um, things spoke about this morning, very quickly you can start to capture voice. Very quickly, a simple digital photograph, you can very quickly start to capture voice, capture events, celebrate voice, celebrate events, celebrate successes. This is our last project. <laughs>
Two important things here. One, I hide behind cute pictures of kids. Two, very simple with technology. The boat's no longer there in the garden. Um, what we did is, I, I, on one of my annual skip runs, I found a load of ropes, I found some boards, I found some nails, I found some milk crates, and we were doing a project on forces. And so we said to the kids, come on, let's build something that moves. And it moves by pulling, and it moves by pushing, and it moves by blood, sweat, and tears. So we come up with this idea of a boat that moved across the playground by pulling and pushing. That was weeks and weeks of learning captured with a few little photographs and we have the glory day song we call it glory days if you find something that you loved let's just make a little short video pop it up on fronter put it up on your mle put it up on your school blog technology just to capture things that are going on so back to this question the incident the curious incident of my broken whiteboard so what did i do first of all i panicked my whiteboard's broken it's like an arm being chopped off then I went back to the person I always think about, Charles Mingus. Charles Mingus has said, being creative is making something really complicated really simple. He said, why don't people play music like Bach anymore? I'm not a big classical fan, but I'll pretend I am. Bach creates simple compositions that everyone can enjoy. Google. Charles Mingus argues, you don't get that much nowadays. Everyone's always complicating things or trying to do things in mad ways in the name of creativity. So I went back to him. Right, I'm going to make things simple. I'm going to start getting out the things that we, we, were just, we heard just then. Things that have been left in cupboards. We got these little robots from Debenhams for £8. We got the little dogs that dance to music for £6 in a Debenham cell. They've been chucked away in a cupboard. No one had touched them. So we got them out, started building, making with them. Got some old DS's that no one wanted. I'm not sure this video works. Right, problem with the video. We played hide and seek with DS's. You know, they have interactive rooms. You go and hide in the garden, give us some clues, we'll come and find you. When we find you, uh, we'll celebrate and do something. Here, with the uh, eight pound um, robots we found, a big math session. Can you build the robot? Throw the instructions away. Man style, top gear style. We don't need instructions, boys. We could throw the instructions away. Can you have a go at actually building it? The boys couldn't. They got really frustrated. The girls loved it. Started building them together. Can you get them? If you get it to work, you keep the batteries, you keep the robots. We took them outside and built a little mini robot world. Listen to this bit, it's lovely. Have you got I love Zane? Of course, they don't always do what you want them to do. We went out and they found out that you could send secret messages to each other and tell people that you love them. <laughs> but you don't show the girls because they'll shout it out. Do you, you love Zane? You love Zane? So go and find somewhere. You, you know, you don't have to be mad. If you want to find a little secret place that's yours, go and find a little secret place that's yours. These were like Mark I DSs. These are like the old style ones. Kids love me when I have my PS1 out. They think it's hysterious. Like, oh, wow, can we touch it? Does it still work? These are the oldest DSs going. You can get them online on eBay really cheaply. But they have the chat room. I had them set up around my room during mass. You've got a problem, ping me. Send me, a little, send me a little message on the DS. I'll have a look. I'll send you one back. I can't use the stylus. <laughs> I get this, what was that? What's that supposed to be? So type, you can type back in. You can touch the little, like your texting phones. You can send them back. Cheap little quick things that are out there. This is Aisha and... Uh, Afghan. Uh, Aisha and Afshan, were, mums don't mind, I've asked them if I can use their pictures. They were struggling with their reading. This was a couple of years back in year two. And their parents came in to see me because they're cousins and they spend all their time together. And mums sat down, they both said, they don't read, they won't ever read with me, what do I do? And as we were talking, they were sat on their phone reading away. They downloaded some site and they got on and they were reading away. So I said, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll ask if anyone's got an old mobile phone. We'll get them, we'll say, can we borrow your phone? We can't afford it, we're quite poor school. Um, violins, all the cuts. But you, you might go into a school that's not got money. You might go into a school that's not got the money. So we asked some parents, have any of you got any phones out there? Wipe the contacts off, we don't want your dad to get in trouble with mum for a list of ladies' names on the phone. <laughs> can we bring them in? Can we use the stuff that's on there? When I was looking at, when I was teaching,
I'm just going to start explaining there what they were doing. What they're doing is, with this old phone that no one used anymore, Mum had looked at Mizumo.com and was offered £1.89 for the phone. What we asked Mum to do, we said, well, could we have the phone? Do you really need £1.89? Could, could we have the phone? Wipe it for me, please, so we can use the video camera. And what we're doing, this is a project we called iReaders. We got kids to sit at a table during guided reading, because I've, I've been teaching 13 years and I can't work out how you keep the others quiet while you're trying to focus with one group. I'll tell you that now. <laughs> Suddenly found out, if on the other groups I gave them little phones and they videoed each other, and then they watched the video back to spot where they were having trouble, what new words they learned, sounds they were mispronouncing. You, you might hear Vaisha has a little bit of artic articulation issue. They would sit with each other, video each other, then watch the phone back. Watch them reading to each other. Look at words that perhaps they were mispronouncing. Look at where they got stuck. Analyse it. Do your job for you, basically. And I could then sit with my group. Not replacing the teacher, just a quick little fix. Cheap. Affordable. Last time I came to present, we just started this project called The Feast of Stories. Um, we just sort of finished the project now, but, it, but it's been made sustainable in each of, each of the um, schools. It was five schools and the Discover Centre in Stratford um, engaged in a project where we took a centre point in our playground, just made a mark, and we measured out a one mile radius from that mark. And then we decided we would record every language spoken in that one mile radius as a bedtime story and a bedtime lullaby. Easy. Charles Mingus. A simple idea. We'll go one mile away from our school, we'll record every single language recorded as a bedtime story and as a lullaby. And we'll create a massive digital archive and we'll put it up online so anyone can access it, anyone can use it whenever they want. Job done. It actually was that simple. Because what happened, as soon as the first archive piece went up online and the parents listened to the story, same reason I behind, hide behind cute pictures of my kids. You have that affection, that maternal love, that parent looking down at the child. That's my child. That's my child telling that story. That's my home language. That's my home language being valued by the school. We ended up with over 172 archive pieces being recorded across 29 different languages that are now in our school, just in Windows Media, as a saved list, so that if anyone wants to go in and teach and use those languages, it's there for them to use. It was actually that simple. Unpicking it wasn't. That was complicated. That wasn't bark. I think this sums it up. This is a rubbish slide because you're only supposed to have about 12 words, aren't you? The thing that we found is, in this project, the children recorded their own stories, and as adults, we decided we wouldn't change them or edit them. And what we did is, we found an old, you know like you get the mobiles that just get plumped in, we used to have a, we used to have one in, sorry, there's someone coming to our school over here. We used, we used to have an old mobile in our playground, and no one went in it, because it looked like it was falling apart. And it was supposed to be the library, but no one ever went in it. So myself, we had a retired blues guitarist, and a key group of people who got involved in the project. We stuck an old laptop in, a microphone a bit like this. Um, we put one nice one that came down, covered it in egg boxes. That became our recording studio. Parents could book in before school or after school. Kids were in and out all the time. That's where you went. That's where you recorded. We collected the archive together. We've now published it online in Posterous. It's, quite, it's cheap, it's free, it's easy. It makes you look like a genius. You put a PowerPoint into Posterous, it opens it up in ten different ways. You put a video in, it gives you a bar, it gives you sound volumes. Everyone says, oh, how did you publish your work like that? Well, I spent ages working on it. You, you attach it as an email, send it off, and it does everything for you. During this project, in our school, we have a key ethos that if a child is going to be diagnosed as having special educational needs, we need to make sure it's special educational needs and not us as teachers not meeting their needs. Not us as teachers thinking about, well actually I could teach them in a different way, but this is how I teach, this is how I've always done it, they're still not getting it. We have a big issue between, is that child really dealing with special educational needs? Or is it us as teachers that have the responsibility to look at how we're performing, look at what we're presenting to them and change that way? This young girl here, Pavan, in the black and gold dress, very quiet, almost selective, mute, I think, I'm not sure if that's the right term, would not talk. 
just would not talk. So we had this space, back to the mobile in the playground. Do I have to be in there as an adult? I don't think so. I trust her. She looks after herself. I switch all the stuff on. Close the door when you come out, Pavan. She wrote the most, well, she told the most beautiful story. The story is called The Maid. And it's once upon a time there was a maid. And she was very poor. And Pavan's mum and dad have just, I spoke to mum and dad, they don't mind me sharing this story. If anyone thinks I'm gossiping. But mum and dad were going through, 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 through a hard time. Pavan was, was very up at, upset at school about it. And there was issues to do with, with income, income support, uh, and parents just getting very upset. This story, The Maid, starts with a child whose mum and dad disappear. She's a very poor child. She goes to the shop, she asks the shopkeeper for a new dress. The shopkeeper says no, but he gives her some old rags. She sews and stitches for days and presents the shopkeeper with a dress she's made from the rags. The, dress, the, the shopkeeper loves the dress so much, he marries her. And she spends the rest of her life making these beautiful dresses in his shop and lives happily ever after. Pavan told that story without us being there. We trusted her. You can do it. You get in there. You record it. You keep that story. That's up online. Family loved the story. Absolutely loved the story. This story here. This is my latest project. You saw QR codes earlier. This is our latest project. It has a brilliant song that goes with it. You may join in, I want you to sing, you put it on, you take it off. I was walking along, and what do you think I saw? A shop selling things that you put on your head, and they called it the silly hat store. There in the shop was the straziest sight, there were hats to the left and hats to the right. Some made you laugh and some made you fight Down at the silly hat store Your turn! You put them on, you take them off You put them on, you take them off You put them on, you take them off Down at the silly hat store I think that's got a right, Steve. Thank you very much. Round of applause. Very nice. I, I quite like that one. It's a bit like a knees up. Have a banana. Well, that's one of our songs that our kids love. I'm giving it. I do work with little ones. Sorry, I didn't say that earlier. Um, nursery next year. Yes. Um, <laughs> QR codes. Um, it, the one you brought up, Kimi. That's the one we used. The, the one that was brought up earlier. That's that's the one we used. We. I like to do drawings. Draw out your story world. Collect a load of words from books that you know. Make lists of things you want to use. And you end up with paper all around the room and all over the table. And then, so what we've done is we've opened up a story hat store. Make yourself a story hat. Uh, Tesco's have done well out of me for foil. Go and make yourself a story hat. We'll type your story up. We're mine in year one. They're, they're quite short stories, some of them. Type me up a story. Put it as a QR code. Stick it on the front of your hat. We've now got a hat stand over in our role play area. Go and get yourself a hat from the hat stand. Scan it. I've got a new phone. They love my gadgets. I don't know how it works. You work it out for me. How do I use these QR codes? Go, I think you poke it at them. I think you do something like poke... I, I play dumb a bit sometimes. They go and choose hats. I've got sofas and... Uh, from where I like skip runs, I've got sofas and beds in my room. So they go and find them. They scan in each other's hat. They share the stories. I can keep the learning. I can archive the learning. We still do all the drawing. We still do all the drawing. We still do all the making. We still do the dressing up and the rehearsing. But now I've got a nice little hat. And what the child can do is take it home, share it with mum. Or leave it in the room. And someone else can come over and share. So our, our silly hat stores are our current project at the moment. Dun, dun, dun. They lived happily ever after and then they had to go to work. You guys are going to work, aren't you? That's from a four-year-old Gregorio. Um, I, I had a bit of a crisis about a month ago. Why am I teaching? Why am I teaching? What, what am I doing? I, I've asked my boss if I could desperately get out of Key Stage 1. I'm sorry, Key Stage 1. Because I really have an issue with the Year 1 testing. Do I want to turn around to a parent of a five-year-old child and say, yes, your child passed, no, your child failed, which is the official term? No, I don't. Um, so about a month ago, I was having real issues with being a teacher. I'm going to get sad. And I was thinking, well, well what else am I going to do then? I'm pretty good at bricklaying, but I, I love working with kids. So I asked my boss, oh, I need to go back into nursery. I need to go back into nursery. I need to play with kids. I need to be back doing the, the kind of stuff that I think 
is important. This is Philip Pullman. He's wrote many, many articles online about uh, performativity culture, about the stance, how many of your percentage of your kids have performed at level three, how many percentage of your kids have performed at 2A, how many percentage of your kids are going to get their national average. You know, are you outstanding? Are you satisfactory? Are you just good? And then when you think you're outstanding, we'll move the goalposts again. So now to be outstanding, you've got to do something else to be outstanding. And this week, we actually asked uh, Ofsted to say, could you tell us what the difference between outstanding and good is? And no one could. So the goalposts are moving, and no one can actually tell you what they are. This just made me think, I really don't want to be doing this job anymore, in all honesty. Sorry, those of you going into the job. <laughs> so then I thought, I can't come here and say that. <laughs> I get lynched. Um, but this was only for about two weeks. And what I have found, I might come back to that one, is I remembered this girl. This is Nabila. And Nabila was a young girl who by accident ended up recording in our Feast of Stories project. I thought she was one of our Cinderella's in our Christmas show who sung a solo. She wasn't. I got that wrong. Um, <laughs> Um, we were looking for a recording session in the afternoon and I said to John the Ice, I said, oh, there's this beautiful song that was in our Christmas show. That would be lovely. I'll go and get Nabila to come and sing it. She came in, she sat down, very confident, as you can see. <laughs> Loves Hannah Montana. And she sung this most beautiful song. And then she started to have little tears and got a bit upset. And I, and I had little tears, got a little bit upset. And John had little tears, got a little bit upset. He's 68. And, 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 he, and we were like, why are you upset? Because that's the first time I've ever sung out loud. And I then went, oh, you weren't Cinderella. And she went, no. And she went, that's the first time. I normally sit in the playground and I sing on my own. Um, and she goes, oh, I sing in my head or I sing quietly so no one can hear me. And she goes, well, I like singing. And she, had, she honestly had this most stunning, stunning voice. And if we've got time, I'll try and find it at the end. And I then said to her, I have an issue of singing. That, was, that, was, that then was terrifying me doing that little song. Uh, and I said to her, I, I couldn't have done that. I said, I couldn't have... Now you've told me that, I couldn't have done that. You should have told me to sod off. You should have said, I weren't Cinderella. Sorry, I weren't Cinderella. That, that was someone else. I said, no, I really, I really wanted to record my voice. The attraction of the technology, the attraction of this archive. I want my voice on there. Um, and I said, well, there's, there's no way I could have done that. I said, I, I find it hard to sing in front of my class. And I said, how, how, what should I do? And whenever I'm struggling, oh, no. Please don't play up now. I shall find it. Is that okay? Whenever I'm struggling, like now, I think, I think about the Beeler, and I think about this conversation we had, and that's why I'm trying to find it quickly. I don't want to move the items, I want to open the items. Right, I'll get there. You'll see the one, it says Nabila Counseling Dan. Yeah, there we are. <laughs> right, what happened is the artist I was working with, the, the retired guitarist, thought it would be hysterical to keep the camera rolling while I was talking to her. Um, but we didn't know what we were actually going to record. <laughs> Yeah, 
The bit I like about that is I'm telling her I couldn't do that. I couldn't sing like you. And she had this real kind of, what? <laughs> what, what you? And she actually got quite upset. It just made me feel really nervous about singing. What's the first thing I should do? How, how do you get just going to stop that bit. It's you, the teachers. You always tell us we can do it. You always tell us we can do it. That's why she said she could sing. Yeah. And again, just in case that got a bit lost, you always tell the kids you can do everything, you teach us everything. This is a moment where you have to believe in yourself. You have to do it. I'm getting a bit teary now, so I'm going to go back to the video. <laughs> I did. I went off and I found a song and we sung in front of 320 people at our family, at our family fair. What I want to end with is this little video here. Uh, it's, it's only about 30 seconds long. I am passionate about using technology in the classroom for the right purpose. For me, it captures the voice of the child. It captures those things. I, sh I can't share that in a book. It wouldn't work if I wrote that down and you read it. I can show a conversation. I can share a piece of learning. I can share a project that gets packed away later on. There's also the other side. I can do things that I couldn't do before. I can record 128 different voices, 172 different languages, and I can share them across the world. Our projects have been picked up in Bahrain, California, Los Angeles, Denmark, Finland, Sweden. We get hits, about 3,000 hits a month across the world on our archive. This is my last little video I wanted to share. I'm going to end on the point that when we went to BET, we had the youngest performers ever at BET. We took a load of five and six-year-olds to BET to share their learning. They love this state-of-the-art robot from Dell that comes around and it talks to you. It asks you questions. It's the teaching robot. But kids do what kids do. After five minutes of playing with this robot, Isha worked out that you could steal sweets from it. <laughs> After another few seconds, she worked out she could steal rulers for her and her friends. Kids will always create. They won't always consume. There's going to come a point when they've had enough of just looking at stuff that we present to them. For me, that's my love-hate relationship with technology. It allows me to create. It allows me to get the kids to consume stuff that perhaps they wouldn't have before. But you've got to remember as new teachers going out there, it's you that makes the machines work. It's you that picks the right app. It's you that uses the projector, the, the visualizer in an interesting way that captures the imagination of the child. It's you that picks the right resources. It's you that makes the difference. Otherwise, they're going to carry on pinching rulers. But I think I'll stop there because I don't want to make you late for your dinner. Thank you very much. <laughs>